Good morning, everyone. Hello. Was it good afternoon? Sorry. I don't know what time it is. I'm from the US, obviously. So, <laughs> uh, My name is uh, Rick Spencer, and I'm from Omega Health Systems, as uh, John was mentioning. Uh, we've been partnered with uh, Cardness now since 2005. And um, we do not only ergonomics consulting, but uh, also software management in the US as well. And so today, my topic is going to be looking at ergonomics in the workplace. So here's our agenda. Uh, we're going to talk about ergonomics and what it is. Uh, a process approach for ergonomics. So where do you start? And if you've already implemented ergonomics, how can you improve? What are some strategies? What are some opportunities for you to get better results with ergonomics? Um, ergonomics and the economy. And the future of ergonomics. So I am from the US. Pardon the accent. Everyone tells me I do have an accent when I come over here, which is always interesting to me. Um, my background, just to give you a little perspective on who I am, uh, my academic training actually is in the field of psychology, so the study of behavior. And specifically, I've looked at uh, industrial organizational psychology, which is the, st the study of behavior in the workplace. And so um, coming to the ergonomics industry, it was a bit different than some of the standard uh, people that come from either health and safety, uh, human resources, or engineering. So. Um, I'm really looking at uh, all aspects of ergonomics, and we'll talk about that today and how it affects your process. So what is ergonomics? Who can give me a, a definition of ergonomics? Just one word you would associate with ergonomics. Pardon me? Environment. Environment. Perfect. What else? That's it, huh? <laughs> okay, tools. Perfect. So environment. Interface, excellent. The job that you've got to do. Yeah, so the job. So we've got job, environment, tools. Anything from the back row? The individuals concerned. The individuals, the people, right? That's something that you have to focus on is the people. One of the biggest challenges we have is you know, looking at just changing the environment when you're not focusing on the people and you can have a bit of a disconnect there. So here's a quick definition for you. The study of people at work, matching the job to the worker, uh, not the worker to the job. So we can see we're studying people and people can't change and that's why when we talk about the environment, when we talk about the tools, when we talk about the job, we have to fit all of that to the workers, the people, because they're not going to change. To be more specific, ergonomics is not just a science but it's a way of thinking about the design of tools and equipment, the layout of workplaces and the overall organization of work. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we continue. So what are we trying to achieve with ergonomics? What are the objectives of ergonomics? Uh, we know there's health and safety objectives. And um, oftentimes, that's where we start with ergonomics, especially from a compliance standpoint. But as John was saying, what else can we achieve? You know, if you're having you know, budget deficits or you're, you know, the, the organization is looking at how to manage the bottom line, you know, health and safety might not be uh, the ultimate message. There, must, there might be other messages, other business objectives that you have to look at. So enhancing efficiency, productivity, and effectiveness of systems, products, and people. So how many of you think that your management teams would be interested in improving efficiency? Yeah? Productivity? Right? Yeah? Uh, to enhance functionality, usability, and desirability of systems. So you're mentioning the interface and to enhance safety, health, and the quality of life of people. So these are some of the primary objectives of ergonomics. Now when I look at ergonomics, I look at three critical elements. The environment, which we had mentioned, the knowledge of the employees, and the behavior. And all three of these elements work intertwined to really define how successful your ergonomics program will be. So really, if you're trying to achieve results with ergonomics, you have to think about these three critical elements and how they work together. So let's get a perfect example. Improper lifting. So I'm going to have everyone stand up real quick. Am I blocking the camera yet? <laughs> All right, so this is a picture of improper lifting. What's improper about this? So not bending his knees. Yeah, he's bending in his back, right? So everyone knows this, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you've been had specific lifting training or not, you probably have a good understanding that this is improper. So why do we do it? It's easier. It's easier, right? Think about it. If you were, uh, you know, 
weightlifters, they do squats, you know, with, with weights, uh, you know, on a barbell over their shoulders. That activates over 200 muscles. That's why they do it, you know, so to build more mus muscle mass. So bending at the waist like this is very easy, right? So go ahead and do a quick squat for me, just like that. Yeah? So if you were to, you know, drop a pencil like this on the floor, do I expect you to do this? <laughs> Does that, does that seem practical? No. no? Why not? It's not the easiest way. It's not the easiest way, right? So the easiest way is just to bend at the back. But there's other options that we could look at, you know, right? One is, you know, I could kneel down, right? Is my back still straight? Yes. Yeah. So that's easy enough. I know Hayden's a golf fan, right? So you've ever seen the golfer squat? Something like that, yeah? So we looked at those three critical elements. Go ahead and have a seat. We looked at those three critical elements. Who remembers the elements? Pop quiz to see if you're really thinking. Behavior. Behavior. Knowledge. Knowledge. Environment. Perfect. So if this person has the knowledge, but they still do the behavior, how can we correct that? What's that? A whip. A whip? <laughs> punishment? OK, we can influence behavior with punishment. What's the most effective way to influence behavior? Training and positive reinforcement. Yeah. Positive reinforcement is uh, the best way to affect behavior long term. So, you know, this person's doing it the easy way. Let's say they have the knowledge, but they still have the behavior. What else could we do? Remember that third critical element? Environment, right? Why is this box on the ground? You know, so if the box is stored on the ground, that promotes him actually having to you know, bend over like this. So if the box is stored within the power zone, which we call the shoulders to the knees, then we've changed the environment to change the behavior. So you can see how all three of those things work together. So here's another example, sitting in the office. So how can we change this? Think about those three critical elements. Environment, what can we do? Adjust the monitor Yeah, so adjust the monitor, that might help. Knowledge, what can we do? Training. Train, what kind of training? Posture. Posture training. What other training? Look really hard at this picture. What other training might this person need? Touch. Yeah, exactly, right? So even if this person was, here's an example where they might have the best design workstation, they might have the best training on how to sit, but because they don't have the ability to type without looking at the screen, they can't avoid this slump posture. So you can see how all three of those elements of ergonomics, the environment, the knowledge, and the behavior are intertwined. And it's not always we can affect the environment and then assume that that is always going to affect the behavior. This is a perfect case. Um, or it's not that we can always affect knowledge and assume that that's going to affect the behavior, right? So all of those things have to be considered. So looking at an ergonomic model, for your organization. So you're saying, okay, I'm looking at improving results for my ergonomics process. These are some of the major factors that you're going to need to look at. So we know about the process approach with the three elements we just discussed. But let's look at these factors. Environment, person, organization, tasks, tools, and technology. So out of these five factors, which do you think is the most difficult to change? Person. The person, right? Why is the person difficult to change? Sure, there's physical limits. We just learned that in our demonstration from our volunteers. People are stubborn. Stubborn, right? Adults are very hard to change their behavior. Peer pressure. Peer pressure, okay. I've done this for 40 years this way, so the rest of us have got this change Perfect. So, however, if we understand these elements of the person, we can better impact these items, especially here. So now, as an organization, you're probably thinking with some of these items that we've already discussed about your policies. If you better know the people of your organization, you can create better policies and procedures so that you can have better results with the person. So all of these items are affected by knowing the person better. So while the person is difficult to change, if we know the people better, we can affect these other factors and have better results. Does that make sense? So here we're looking at working conditions and health. So we have working conditions. I know this is a little bit small, so I apologize. 
factors that enhance or impede an employee from performing work-related tasks. Uh, they may be physical, organizational, or social. And then we have consequences, short and long-term outcomes on work-related productivity and health. So here we see some of those same factors that we just looked at, but we see how they lead to consequences, both in productivity and health. Now, the thing about the consequences you have to consider is consequences can be both negative and positive, right? So we have to think about this relationship between the working conditions and the consequences and how can we get better productivity and better health through the implementation of ergonomics. So let's talk about some practical steps that you can take as organizations. So some things that you can do after you leave today, whether you have an existing ergonomics process, whether you're looking to get better results from your ergonomics process, or whether you're starting something afresh. So the first step, uh, which is step one, is becoming proactive. So one of the things that I see all too often is, especially from a compliance perspective, people say, oh, we need ergonomics. We've had injuries or we have complaints. Uh, we need to be compliant. We need to put our policies and procedures in place. And that's a good start. And that's definitely something needed, especially from a legislative standard. However, how many of you have seen an organization implement policies and procedures that hasn't delivered results? Anyone? So how can that happen? You can be in compliance, but not be delivering results. Where's the disconnect? The people. Yeah. And so what you have to look at when you start is, where is the, what is the data telling you? Where can you have success with your organization so you can learn from that success? And more importantly, from that success, drive momentum. Because guess what? If you're trying to drive this whole process from you know, your desk, if you will, it's going to be a long, difficult journey, right? So if you can garner champions, if you can garner support from your colleagues, from others in, in, other, in departments, you can have a lot more success. So take a look at your absence history or discomfort. Where can you get some data so that you can have metrics to document your success? You know, it's easy to say, well, we weren't in compliance. Now we're in compliance because we have policies and procedures in place. But if you don't have the data, how can you go to management and say, hey, we were successful. Here's where we started. These are the intervention steps that we had. And now we have these results. And so what you need to do is identify a place where you can get some quick wins, some success, because that will help you garner momentum, garner support. You'll also be able to get champions. So maybe you start with a department that has a manager that is really interested in, in health and safety of their employees. Because then once you have a success story there, you can take that manager's story to the other departments, those departments that might have more difficult managers and difficult personalities. So once you have some data, you can start prioritizing risk, and you can actually start acting in areas where you'll have the most success where you can have some success stories and some quick victories. Um, education, obviously, is key. How many of you do some type of training for ergonomics right now? Mikesh, OK. Looks like most of the people. And then create a climate that supports ergonomics. This is probably one of the biggest things that I hear as far as health and safety professionals and people that are managing ergonomics is that they spend all this time and effort and energy into creating a process, maybe doing training, setting up their policies, setting up their procedures, and then it's not effective. And the reason is the climate doesn't support it. So you know, you send employees to training, or you train them via software, and then they go back to their working environment, and the manager says, we don't have time for ergonomics. Get back to work. Well, what happens? Your credibility goes down, right? They say, oh, well, ergonomics isn't a priority here. You know, it's something that I can do if I have time. But as far as a priority, it's something that is, can be forgotten. 